If you're just starting out with electronics and microcontrollers, it can be confusing as to what bits you need to get hold of to make your projects. So let me show you how you can get everything you need in just one go. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. When you're starting out into microcontrollers and Raspberry Pi Pico and things like that, it can be quite confusing as to what you actually need to get hold of to be able to do your projects. And we're, we're all guilty, especially people like me, of, of sort of just assuming that when we sort of go through a project, you'll know where to get hold of bits and, and, and all the tools and all the um, associated electronics that you need to get up and running. But this is where um, a kit of parts can sometimes come in very handy when you're starting out. So I've, I've got one here, which is a Raspberry Pi Pico Advanced Kit. Um, it's the one from Ellie Crow. Um, and, and this really does have everything you need. And I say the advantage of that is that the projects in here, um, you don't need to go and find all the bits online, order them up, then find out that they're not, they're not quite the right piece or you need some extra bits to interface with them uh, and so on. Absolutely everything you need to build these projects is all contained within this one complete package, um, actually including the Raspberry Pi Pico itself. So um, if you are starting out, these are, well, I think they are a fantastic way of getting you into the system so that you have a base kit of parts where you can then go off and start to build your projects. So that's what I'm going to have a look at in this tutorial today, is, is um, what this package contains, how you can get up and running with it very quickly, and then what you can do with it. So let's have a look and see what's inside at first, and then we'll have a go at doing one of the exercises. So to get a full list of exactly what's in this kit, do, do please go to the sales page for this on the Elecro website. And I'll, I'll put links to that in the description down below. But just having a quick look through, um, it does come, as I said, with its own Raspberry Pi Pico. And you've got a range of sensors like infrared sensors and uh, even a, a, a red laser transmitter, vibration sensors. There's a range of motors, servo motors and DC motors with um, geared motors. Um, there's an RFID module. There's a a, an LCD display, um, there's some other ultrasonic sensors and keypads and micro switches and, and even as I say um, a, a little robot car that you can build up. So really it has everything you need to get started doing some projects and some quite um, intricate projects too. There's, there's, a, there's a good range of sensors here and of course one, once you get the hang of these you can start to combine your sensors into other little projects that you can make up yourself. So I say it, it gets you up and running very quickly without having to think about buying in different bits and pieces and trying to piece together these electronics yourself. So the kit comes in a nice box, which if you open it up, it, it is literally packed full of electronic bits and pieces. So there is a, a sort of a key to what all the bits are, um, so you can help identify them, which also has instructions on how to make the little um, uh, robot car. And then a little track on the back, I guess, for the robot car to do some line following exercises. The actual electronics itself then, we of course have a, a Raspberry Pi Pico here. Now this is the non-Wi-Fi version, so just a standard Raspberry Pi Pico. But of course that's going to be able to do everything that we need to with this particular kit of parts. After that then, it, it really is just a, a, a great big pile of electronics bits, sensors, connectors, LEDs and so on. All of the wiring that you're going to need to build up your um, circuit boards is all here as well with some um, other um, connector cables here. You've actually got all of your breadboard and there are I think three bits of breadboard in here, uh, a couple of this size and a couple of smaller sizes. So, so really absolutely everything you need, including all the bits of course for the robot car, they are all inside this pack ready for you to get started learning how to use your Raspberry Pi Pico. To get started with the kit, you're going to need to get hold of the user manual. So if you head across to the elecrow.com website, 
And then in the search bar, just type in the Pi Pico Advanced Kit. And that will then search through for that particular product. So if we then go to the product page, we can scroll down to the bottom and there we have some links off to the bits of information we need. So we have got um, any, any of the code which is used in the user tutorial. Um, we can get hold of it from there or we can type it in ourselves. There is um, a map and assembly manual for the robot car, but we want to go to the user tutorial and that will open up a PDF, which is how to actually use this kit. So I just get rid of that. So if you scroll down through that, again, it, it, it does take you through each of the lessons, which will gradually increase in complexity, taking you through each of the different electronics components that are in the kit itself. So all the way through from the simple LEDs through to using some of the motors and so on, all the way up to actually building the um, a little robot car and then getting various bits of software running on that to allow it to avoid obstacles and so on. It also then gives you some introduction into the actual um, Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, so again, you, you will need to understand what the Pico is capable of. You'll also need to know which pins to connect to. So this pinout diagram here, you'll be refer referring back to that quite often. Uh, and that will tell you whenever it um, is calling for GPIO pin 10 in the manual or the user tutorial, it will tell you which actual pin on the Raspberry Pi Pico you need to connect to. So this will be something you'll be referring to quite a lot. After that then, we do need to get the Pi Pico set up correctly. So, so by default, the Pi Pico is really set up to run C++ programs, but the actual user tutorial is all using a, a language called MicroPython, which is much more user-friendly, especially for, for, for beginners. But you do need to install some software onto the Pi Pico to get that up and running. And I'll, I'll take you through that in a second, but it is fairly straightforward. After that then, we're going to need to install our IDE, which will let us type in our programs and communicate with our Pi Pico to get them to run. And then we're into the actual software itself. So let's first go through and get things set up. The first thing that I recommend you do is to get your Pi Pico onto a piece of breadboard. And really what this is for, um, we have a number of the pins here um, on our Pico which are on this um, sort of header um, connectors here. Now if, if bits of wire or anything fall across these we can short some of the pins out and that could destroy your Pi Pico. So putting it on the breadboard will protect that. Now it, it can be a bit tricky to get it onto the breadboard. It, it, it's not going to push in very easily. But the trick to this then is to get one set of pins down in, into the uh, lined up on one side. So I've got the pins down on this side here. I'm then going to lean it across until the pins on the far side, so I'm pushing this way with it, until the pins come in here. And then I'm just simply going to wiggle it until it fits down onto the breadboard itself. And at that point there, we should have it nice and flush on the breadboard. And really that means now that we have really good connections with the breadboard down both sides of the pins, and we can plug our connectors into any of these pins down here. Now to get the software loaded onto this, we need to boot the Pi up into its boot mode. And for that, we will need to connect it up to our PC using the supplied uh, micro USB cable. And the way this will work then is we're going to plug one end of it into our PC. Then when we're ready to get our, our Pico set up, we're going to hold down the little boot select button here. So I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to keep that held down as I connect in my cable. So that, because the other end is plugged into the PC, that will power on the Raspberry Pi Pico. And as I'm holding down this button, it will put it into its boot mode, where it will then appear as a, as a disk drive on your PC. And at that point, we can start to copy across the MicroPython firmware um, very easily. So let's go and have a look and see that in, in, in action. So if you go back to the user manual then, you'll find that link off to the Raspberry Pi documentation. If you click on through on that, you'll come to this page 
And if we scroll down, you'll see it here talking about how to install the software, which is what we're just going to do in a second. You'll then see that there are a number of different files that you can download. Now, the Pico that comes with the pack is just the standard Raspberry Pi Pico. There are variations that have Wi-Fi support and uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. So we need to download the Raspberry Pi Pico version. So once that downloads, save it somewhere on your computer. We then need to find that file. So if I go through here and open up that folder again, I'm now going to hold down that boot select pin uh, button while I plug my Raspberry Pi Pico into my computer. We'll see that it pops up here as a, as a, as a hard drive. And then all I do is I simply copy that file onto that hard drive and that will install MicroPython onto my Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, and that's all done. Now I'm going to go off and install Thonny. So back again to our user manual and just a bit further down, you'll find a link here to the Thonny website. And if we go there, um, so, so, so Thonny is this thing called an IDE, which will allow us to actually type in our programs and then send those down to the Raspberry Pi Pico so that we can run them. So you'll need to download the relevant one for your computer and just install that. So I'm gonna download, and again, going with the recommended version here is usually the way to go. So once that's all installed, we just need to open up Thonny. Make sure that your Raspberry Pi Pico is connected to your computer. Then we're gonna to go to the Tools menu and Options. We're gonna to go to Interpreter. And then when it says what type of interpreter, we're gonna pull that button down and we're gonna use MicroPython for our Raspberry Pi Pico. So the port, it should be um, detected automatically. So if we okay that, and if everything's running, we should find that in our shell box down here, it now says that we have MicroPython version, um, or whatever version it happens to be for whenever you install that. And that is now connected to our Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is now a prompt actually on our Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you get this far, that means that everything is set up correctly. Now, if for whatever reason you find that your board is not detected, then we'll need to tell Thonny exactly where it is plugged in. So you'll need to open up something called Device Manager. So if you go into your Start menu and type Device Manager, you should find that app coming up. And if we open that, this lets us see everything that's connected to our computer. So there is a ports area here. If we open that up, you'll find that there are some of our standard ones, but it will one of them will talk about a USB serial device being connected to your computer. And you can see here that is on COM port 5 on my computer. So if I go back to Thonny, if I go to my tools and options again, back into my interpreter, where it says the port um, for that, if I pull that down, I should then find that there is a COM5 option in there. And if I select that, that will then do exactly as it did in the automatic detect. Again, if I look down in the corner here, you can see that I'm already connected to COM5 down here. But that's how you specifically tell Thonny where your Raspberry Pi Pico is plugged in. So we're now ready to actually do some coding on our Pi Pico. Now, in the user tutorial, there are a number of programs we need to type in, or we can, of course, download the code from the Elecro website. So back in there, if we go to the sample code download link, we'll find that that will download a zip package for us. We can then find that on our computer. Now, I did have some problems extracting that file where some of the file names in this are, are too long. So if you do get that problem, um, the easy way around that is to simply open the file up, go into it, and eventually you will get, if you keep going down the directories, you'll eventually get to each of the various lesson files. So if I now select all of these files, uh, like that, and if I then copy those, I can come back out to my downloads folder and I can simply paste them in here. And that should bring across all of those lesson files and extract them correctly. 
And I've now got all the files now that I need for my projects. So I'm going to take us through lesson two, which is this breathing light, just to show you how to use the code, how to connect up your Raspberry Pi Pico and how to then download and run the software. So let's have a look at that one next. So let's go back into our user guide. And if we scroll down a bit in that, you'll eventually come to lesson two, which is this breathing light. And that's the one that we're going to work through together. So for each of these lessons, it introduces the new components which you're going to be using. So we're going to be using some breadboard for this. Uh, and, and to make it easy, I'm going to do this on um, a, a package which lets me just draw things on the screen. So, so we have our breadboard, and as, you, as, as we did before, we've already plugged our Raspberry Pi Pico into that. Now, now, the breadboard is designed to make it very easy for you to build up circuits. And the way this is laid out is we have groups of pins. So, so these, these five holes here are actually all connected together. There's a gap in the middle, and then there's a separate block of five pins over here. We then have some vertical pins, so all the vertical ones down here on the red side are connected together, and all the ones on the blue side are connected together. So what we do is that we have our Pico plugged in here, and if we want to make a connection to pin number 39, which is labelled there, I would plug one of my wires in here. And the wires we're using is, in your pack, you will find there is a big bundle of um, different lengths of wires, and each but each end of the wire has got a pin in it. So you plug one end of the pin in here, and then if we want to connect that to uh, the pin down here, we would simply plug from there, we would plug the other end of it in down here, and that would then connect those two pins together. And on mine, I can just simply show that as a piece of wire just going between the two. So I've now connected pin number 39 down here to pin number 21. And that's really how we're going to build up our circuits. So if I get rid of that. The two vertical lines here, we use those slightly differently, and these tend to be used for our power. So the blue line tends to be our ground, and the red line tends to be our power supply. Now, our Raspberry Pi Pico is very clever in that it will actually provide power for our circuits. Now, if we go across back to its... Um, pinout diagram, and again, this is in the user guide, or, or you'll find these online if you search for Raspberry Pi Pico pinouts. We can see here that our ground, or zero volts, is on pin number 38, and our output voltage, so our power supply voltage, is on pin number 36. So if I go back across to my circuit, so pin number, and I've forgotten already which ones they are, so pin number 38 is our ground, so I'm going to connect, so pin number 39 you can see is marked, so pin number 38 is this one. So I'm going to connect that pit wire to my ground line here, which is the blue line. I'm then going to connect my pin number 36, which is my positive supply, to my red line. And I'm going to connect it there. So that now means that if I ever want to power bits of my circuit down here, I have zero volts coming all the way down this blue line, and I have 3.3 volts or my plus supply coming down this line. So let's go and have a look and see what we need to do to build up this circuit then. So we're going to be using an LED or these light emitting diodes. And on these, we, we, do, we do have to make sure that we plug them the right way around. So these are um, direction sensitive. And you can see here we, in the, the manual, it does talk you through um, how these are connected together. So we have a, a cathode, which is the negative side of it, and that tends to be connected down towards ground. And our anode, the positive side, which is connected up to our power supply. And there's two ways of telling which are which here. If you get an LED out of one of the packets, you'll find that there are two leads coming out of the bottom of it. Uh, the short lead is the cathode, or the negative end of the LED. The long lead is the anode, or the positive end of the, end of the LED. Now, you'll also find that if, if the leads happen to be chopped off, um, you will find that there is on the plastic body 
the little rim around the bottom of that, there is a flat spot on that. Now, this diagram is actually wrong. The flat spot is beside the cathode or the negative end, and the rounded side is actually the anode. So, so we now know how to tell the two pins apart on the LED. Now, if we scroll down a bit, you can see here, it's, it's showing a little diagram of what the circuit's going to look like. And a bit further down, it now gives us the pinouts or the pin connections. So we need to connect pin GP2 on our Pico to the long pin or the anode of our LED. And then the other end of the LED is going to go to ground. So to find out where GP2 is, we need to go to our pinout diagram. And we can see here that GP2 is on pin number four. So on our Pi Pico, pin number one, and on most devices, pin number one is the top left-hand corner. And you can see on the Pi Pico that actually has got um, a little bit of solder mask up there, which actually tells us where that is. So pin number one, two, three, four. And then our ground, we've already taken ground across to our blue line down the side. So we need to connect our, our, our LED then between pin number four and our ground. So let's go across and have a look at how we do that. So on my breadboard, I'm going to take an LED and I'm going to put it into um, two um, rows down here. So let me just um, turn that round a bit for so I can do this. So I'm going to turn it that way around there. Okay, so we need to have the pins on two separate rows. If you put them on the same row, they're obviously going to be connected together and that will short it out. So here we have our, our pins coming down. So if I put them into um, there, so on this one then, um, I have my flat side here. So this pin here is actually my cathode and this pin here is my anode. So we saw here that pin number four, one, two, three, four, needs to be connected to my anode, which was my pin here. So I just have to plug it in. And what I'll do is I will just take a wire from my wire pack and I will just plug it into pin number four here that row and then plug it into the row down here for my um, anode on my LED. I'm then going to, I know that this pin here is my ground connection and I've made this whole vertical row into ground. So I'm going to take a wire from my ground. And I'm going to plug it into one of the holes on that row for my cathode. And at that point there, I now have my circuit built up. So I have my Pi Pico. GP2 or pin number four is connected to the anode of my LED. My ground on pin number 38 is connected to the cathode on my, P, uh, my LED. And our circuit is now ready for programming. So if we jump back into our user guide, after our pin connections, you'll see the actual code listed out that's going to generate this sort of pulsating light. Now, you can either type that in, or as I said, we can actually then pull that in from the code that we just downloaded. So let, let's, let's go back into Thony now. And if I go to my file uh, and open, I'm going to open a file from this computer, and then I just need to go and find that um, file. So if I go, so I've put it deep down inside my filing system here. So we have a starter kit and my downloads, and lesson two. And you'll see there is a .py file. So .py is a Python file. So if I open that up, and you'll see that is the same code that we just saw on our um, user guide. Now, um, in, in learning to write this code, obviously you're gonna have to learn what these things mean. So basically what's happening here is our, our code is built up from lots of modules. So there are some modules which are ready-made for you, which allow you to talk to the pins and drive them in certain ways. So we're importing what are known as libraries here. So this is a, a machine library which lets us talk to pins and PWN is pulse width modulation, which will let us control how bright the LED is. It's then importing a time package. We're then setting up some parameters for our um, system. So we're connecting up a pin here. So pin number two, which is the GP2 um, pin. We're then into a loop here, which is basically going to 
run through setting the brightness of the LED, waiting a bit, and then changing the brightness of the LED so it sort of starts to pulsate. But again, all, all of this, how, how you write this code and how you um, learn that, um, you will have to do that um, going through this manual, seeing what it does. But also then, of course, um, even myself, I have a number of tutorials which will teach you how to program in, in Python. But once we have a program, we now need to get that onto our PyPico and get that running. So we've got our code ready. We've got our PyPico connected up. All we need to do is hit the run button. That will download it into our Raspberry Pi Pico and start the code running. And there we have our LED pulsating, um, which gives us this breathing light effect as per the lesson title. Then when we want to stop our code, we can simply click the stop button and that should then, in effect, reboot our Raspberry Pi Pico. So that's pretty much how you work through these exercises. And after that, it's really up to you to have a play. You have a big box of bits. Um, there's a whole range of sensors. There's some motors and actuators um, and, and just really loads of things to have fun with. And of course, with this being a complete kit, uh, everything you need is in the box. So by the time you've worked through these exercises, you will have a good broad understanding of a range of different devices. And it'll cover pretty much everything that you're going to be doing in your sort of project work going forwards, or at least give you an idea of how you will um, interact with those sensors and interface them with your Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you are thinking about having a go with this microcontroller stuff, then I do highly recommend one of these kits. As I say, everything is in there and it takes all of the hassle out of trying to work out what bits you need, where to get them from, and then piecing them all together. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do please like it and subscribe to the channel to get more of my coding, making, and retro gaming videos. I look forward to seeing you in another video very, very soon. And bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.